So here's a fan fiction I did a few years ago, and it's one of my personal favorites. Now, I've redone this one with AI art, and I hope you guys enjoy it because I think it makes it come to life just that much more. I'm experimenting with some other things, such as making the mouths move so it can be just a little more immersive. I hope you guys enjoy this one as well as the next one coming out, which is what if Darth Maul trained Anakin with this style? Enjoy. Oh, and the AI stuff starts about one minute after this, which gives you a bit of an understanding of this fanfiction that we're about to embark on. In The Empire Strikes Back, we all remember the infamous scene where Vader tells Luke that he is his father. We all saw Luke's reaction where he screams no in disbelief, but searches his feelings and knows it to be true. As Vader tells him, Luke, you can destroy the Emperor. He has foreseen this. It is your destiny. Join me and together we can rule the galaxy as father and son. As Luke looks away for a bit, trying to find a way out, he eventually thinks about things. What if he actually joined his father? What if he journeys with him and learns the ways of the Force as he shows him? What if he eventually overthrows the Emperor? Isn't that what the Rebellion has been trying to do all this time? Overthrow the Emperor and his plans? If Luke destroys him, he will be the strongest, and that means he'll overpower Vader and everyone else. He could then either destroy Vader or perhaps convince his father to turn to the light as he did in the end. Luke nods. Yes, father, I will join you, but I'll never join the Emperor. I wish to kill him, just as I came here to defeat you. As Luke inches closer to Vader, getting off of the ledge, he takes his father's gloved hand and is pulled to safety. Now, my son. You will begin your true training. As the scene cuts to Obi-Wan and Yoda on Dagobah, we get Yoda having the same scene that he had in Episode 3 after Order 66 was executed. Now, since we can't go the normal route of the movies, we have to change things up quite a bit. So, we can either make Luke evil, or we can make him good, but using the dark side, kind of like Mace did. I like that option, so let's go with that. So, Luke embarks on his quest with Vader, and over the next year, between the time of Episode 5 and 6, Luke trains heavily. We pretty much get the canon story of Starkiller and Vader, except it's Vader's actual son, and he trains Luke in secret. The training is absolutely insane. It's nothing like we've seen in the movies or in the comics. This is balls to the wall kind of training. It's not like what Yoda put him through. Luke learns how to use the Force in ways that he's never had to before. As Yoda said, if he starts down the dark path, forever will it dominate his destiny. However, that's not really the case. As Mace Windu used the dark side, he even says in the books that his lightsaber fighting form of a pod is a way to channel the darkness within him. So it's it's not so black or white, kind of like Yoda says. Luke is not any different from Mace. He has the darkness within him as well, just as Anakin did, just as every Jedi or Sith does. The only difference here is he chooses to control it, to tame it, never forgetting that the Emperor was the real monster and that it would be selfish of him to deny the true power of learning the Force to stay in the dogmatic light. Vader sends Luke back to Mustafar, to his castle, where he keeps him far away in a dark side cave on the planet, some place where his Force energy won't be felt anywhere in the galaxy, much like what Yoda did on Dagobah with the Dark Side Force Nexus on the planet to mask his energy. Here, Luke trains in secret. Vader is the ruler of the planet, he commands everything, and here he would be able to keep Luke hidden and train him when and wherever necessary. The year passes by. Luke is unbelievably powerful. He's like Gohan during the Cell Games, where he trained in the hyperbolic time chamber and ascended to Super Saiyan 2 permanently, and he's walking around that neutral phase. Luke is consumed with the Dark Side. Being trained by Vader has been nothing shy of terrifying, painful, and powerful. However, one thing he hid from Vader were his meditations. Luke would retreat to always meditate after his hard day of training in the ways of the dark. This would cleanse himself of the hatred and learn to control it. At first, it was near impossible, but as he once told Yoda, you want the impossible. And then against all odds, Yoda lifts his X-Wing. Luke meditates hard. He sees Leia and his friends. He hasn't seen them in almost a year now, and he knows the time has finally come to make his move to kill the Emperor once and for all. Vader trains Luke not just in the ways of the dark side, but he trains him to defeat the Emperor, the most powerful Sith Lord in existence, something Luke has never been up against. He teaches him the subtleties of Force Lightning, at least as much as he knows about it from his limited knowledge. His lightsaber fighting styles are all mastered by Vader, and I mean all of them, one to seven. Now Vader had to single-handedly, no pun intended, learn from scratch all over again once he became more machine than man, so he was a good teacher. Luke and Vader realize that he's ready. He must end this destructive conflict 
and bring order to the galaxy. After training heavily one last time across the lava plains, Vader against Luke, their lightsabers clashing against one another in unparalleled speed. Use your hatred. The Emperor will take everything from you like he did me. Your friends will all die at his hands, and it will be your doing. Do not fail as I failed her. Luke stops. Who? Vader breathes heavily, jarred at what he had just said. He had just spoken of Padme to Luke for the first time. In this past year, he never spoke to Luke about anything personal. Day in and day out, he would train his son in order to overthrow the Emperor, just as he had wished he could do before he lost to Obi-Wan and lost his powers. He had let it slip. Regaining his composure, he swung at Luke with fear and anger of revealing everything he had sworn to lock away. Almost taking Luke's head off when Luke used the darkness and light within him to fight back, catching Vader off guard after a block and parry. He cut Vader's arm clean off. As Vader pushed Luke back with the Force, Luke showed no mercy. He continued his onslaught, as Vader continued to use the Force as his guide, allowing the pain to fuel his rage and his power. Hurling stones and lava at Luke, his son was hit by stone after stone when he saw the lava being thrown at him with Vader's Force. He used a Force shield of his own to protect him as he hurled the lava back at his father, causing Vader to be smothered in hot lava. Fortunately, Vader's suit was built to withstand almost anything, even lava. We can also see this in the canon comics where Vader actually is submerged into the lava river on Mustafar. Getting to his feet, Vader looks at Luke, still poised and ready. You have done well. You are ready. The plan was to bring Luke to the Emperor, just as the Emperor had foreseen. Now, we're really getting some of the Return of the Jedi Force Unleashed vibes here. Now, timeline-wise, we're sitting right about at the beginning of Return of the Jedi, just a little bit before, where Luke goes to save Han, except now he goes to fight the Emperor. The fright of Han being frozen forever is what he uses as part of his anger and fear for his friend's lives being in danger if he loses. Leia would die a terrible death, and so could be said about all of his friends and all the innocent people in the galaxy. He hasn't seen any in a full year. All he's done is train with Vader day in and day out in secrecy to the galaxy. Before they left, Vader left to his chambers, with no mention of why or when he'll return, only to meet Luke in his ship hours later. Vader brings Luke to the Emperor's throne room aboard the second Death Star, in shackles. The events play out the same way they did in Return of the Jedi. You want this, says the Emperor, pointing to Luke's Jedi weapon. Take it. Strike me down with all of your hatred, and your journey to the dark side will be complete. As Luke stares at the empty scenery of space before him out the window, he turns his lightsaber towards the Emperor. When he ignites it, hoping to kill Sidious, he hears a whimper of pain. He knows he finally did it, and it was easier than he thought. When he turns to look at the Emperor dying before his feet, he is struck with immense pain and grief. As he watched his lightsaber pierce through the stomach of his father, Vader drops to his feet, clutching his abdomen as he started to gasp for air through his respirator. Laughing, Sidious says, Young fool, I too know the force. Sidious rises from his throne. Pathetic child, you think I didn't know my feeble dog of an apprentice was training you behind my back? I see your mind, and his even more. He has done my bidding without me even asking for it, and now he has brought me a far younger, more powerful apprentice, ready to take his place at my side. No, no, I'll never join you! Father, get up! I need you! We'll take him together! Palpatine turns around to strike Vader, full of lightning, taking him near death. As Luke summons his saber and charges the Emperor, being thrown back by Sidious's other outstretched hand. Continuing to kill Vader, as Luke knows what must be done, he lets go of everything. His life is dark. He completely becomes engulfed with all areas of the Force. The darkness of the Skywalker bloodline, the true power of the Force, emanates through him. His eyes flickering between blue and yellow. He moves closer to the Emperor as Palpatine stretches out his hand to push Luke back. Young Skywalker staggers but remains firm and continues to slowly walk towards the Emperor, his lightsaber at the ready. Sidious turns around, now taking both of his hands and stretching them out towards Luke, firing blast after blast of Force Lightning, sending his lightsaber out of his hand. Luke had never expected this. This was power that he had never seen before. He was overwhelmed, his lightsaber far away, and the bolts now entering his body like daggers of fire and ice, ripping apart his flesh by the second, cooking his body from the inside. As he screams in agony and pain, he reached out to his father who lay on the ground staring at him, his breaths extremely shallow and slow. Luke had failed. 
his friends, the galaxy, all the innocents was about to die at his hands. Everything was beginning to become black. He felt death was near soon, and he felt a sense of solace, a feeling of comfort that the end is near. As his eyes began to roll to the back of his head, he immediately could see, within an instant, it was as if nothing was happening, as if his eyes weren't damaged by the lightning anymore. He saw everything crystal clear, like a droid would. The lightning continued to go over his eyes, but it did not touch him. He soon realized that he was looking through the lenses of a helmet. It was his father's. Vader had moved parts of his suit to his son to protect him. Luke no longer felt the lightning course through his body. He was wearing his father's gloves and integral parts of his armor to lessen the barrage of lightning dealt by Sidious. Luke saw his father like he had never seen him before, feeble and weak, laying there, being continuously zapped by Palpatine for his betrayal. He could see his father's face for the first time ever. Anakin screamed in pain. His maskless face, gloveless hands, and bare neck began to char as Palpatine hit him with all the power of a true Sith Lord's rage. Completely entranced with his hatred, Palpatine didn't notice Luke getting up from behind him. As we see Sidious continue to destroy Vader's body, Luke instinctively puts his hand to his side and finds not his lightsaber, but the black and chrome heavy hilt of his father's. Luke knows what must be done. He immediately thrusts the hilt into Sidious's back, igniting the crimson blade into him. As the lightning stops and Palpatine looks at Anakin with a sense of astonishment and disbelief, he had been so busy and consumed and engulfed with the dark side and betrayal of Vader that he had closed off his surroundings, completely full of tunnel vision. It had been his downfall, his hubris. Sidious fell to the floor as Luke used the force to pick him up and hurl him over the balcony, falling to his depths below. Now, since the ray shields weren't down, nothing happens to the Death Star, but Palpatine's body is gone for good. Luke rushes over to his father, taking off his mask, his eyesight slowly returning. I'll bite they'll never be as good as they once were, before Sidious was destroying them. Father, we did it. We killed him. As Anakin barely moves and uses his last efforts to gaze up at his son, he sees him with admiration, with love, and feeling proud. Running his mechanical hand across Luke's cheek, he says with his last breath, My son. And dies. Luke pulls his father out of there. As stormtroopers see him, they begin to fire. When Luke uses the force to expel them, immediately like nothing. He leaves the Death Star to burn his father's body, setting a direct course for a swampy planet. Luke blasts off into the galaxy, disappearing into the stars. That's the end of the fan fiction, everyone. Now Luke from here obviously can do a million different things. I think, and where his story goes from here in, in this fanfiction, is a little bit more rogue than his original version of Return of the Jedi. However, he has learned to control it when need be. So the swampy planet that he goes to is of course Dagobah, where he goes to talk to Yoda one last time before Yoda dies. Kind of like he just did in Return of the Jedi. Which I always thought was funny because, you know, he was just preparing a, a home-cooked meal of, you know, some soup or beans or whatever he was making. And then Luke comes and he's like, well, you know what? I'm just gonna croak. I'm gonna die over here. Maybe it was his last meal. Who knows? From there, Luke goes to meet with Leia and they plan to save Han. And the rest of the story is, well, we can write that out too if you guys want. I can make a part two to this or a part three or whatever you wish. His methods at this point are much more unorthodox this time around, but you know, that's the Luke of this story. And at the end of it all, he's still Luke and he's still a good guy, but now with some shades of gray. So I hope you all enjoyed this fan fiction. I will be turning this one into an animation just as, as I said in the beginning of this video. So please hit like if you want to see that. Stay tuned for it. And I hope you enjoyed the final return to the fan, well, not the final return, but the, the return to the fan fictions because I would love to continue making these and I really miss making them actually. It's been probably like a year or so. I don't know how long it's been, but I feel like I haven't made something like this in a very, very long time, at least to this caliber and this uh, style that I used to make them in. So hope you enjoyed it once again. I'll see you all in the next episode. And until then, remember the force will be with you always. Bye.